Hi everybody, it's your life science slash biology teacher, Mr. Poser, and today we are starting a new unit on the patterns of evolution by getting into our first topic, which is population genetics. We're going to split this up into two videos. In this video, we're going to talk about allele frequency and microevolution, how we're going to calculate that. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the five different ways that population evolve, populations evolve, or the five different ways that microevolution occurs. So uh, these two videos go very, very well together, but we're going to do them in two separate videos because they require two different cognitive tasks here. All right, so I'm going to start off this video, um, Population Genetics Part 1, by asking you this. Darwin described evolution as descent with modification. So how modified does a generation have to be in order for evolution to occur? Okay, when you think of the word evolution, you might think of the picture of the ape magically growing into a human, which I hate. And if you know me, then you know why I hate that picture. But when we say the word evolution, you think of really large, broad, um, long-term changes. But that's not, that's not necessarily the case. Evolution can be occurring even if there's a very, very, very slight modification in a population from one generation to the next, okay? So descent with modification means any modification from one generation to the next is evolution. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. How do we determine whether or not a population is evolving, okay? Uh, so uh, how we're going to talk about this is the, in the simplest context that I can think of in the terms of a population of blobs. Look at that. They're, they're blobs, they live on my screen, um, and they, they live happily ever after. I don't know. They're a bunch of organisms, okay? Um, and so in our blob population, there's three different phenotypes for color um, with the, these corresponding genotypes down here. That's right. I'm bringing those terms back. We're going back to genetics, okay? This is population genetics after all. All right, so check it out. We have three different colors, red, purple, and blue. Um, the homozygous dominant individuals are red, as you can see down here. The heterozygous individuals are purple, and the homozygous recessive individuals are blue. Okay, so you can be three different colors of blob um, depending on your alleles in this population of blobs. Okay, uh, so the genes in the alleles, the total collection of alleles that this population has is called the gene pool, which is a term that you may have heard of before. Um, and that refers basically, as I set up here, collection of alleles found in all individuals of the population. Okay, so if we're doing population genetics, that's what we are focused on is the entirety of a population's genes, also known as the gene pool. Okay, and we're going to be talking about this one gene for color here, or this one tra trait for color um, in this population for this, uh, for this example. All right, so there are 12 individuals in this population, which means there are 24 alleles for color in the gene pool, all right? So uh, every single one of these organisms is diploid, and if you remember what that means, they have two sets of chromosomes, two sets of genes, one from mom, one from dad, right? So every single one of these organisms is going to have a genotype of two alleles, right? And I wrote them out over here on the image to make it, to make this easier, right? We're just, we're just starting off with this simple. Okay, so each blob is diploid. They are diploid organisms. Okay, um, so knowing the genotypes and the phenotypes of the population can help us determine the allele frequency. And before I give you the definition of what allele frequency is, this is how we're going to determine whether or not a population is evolving. Okay, we can use some math to figure out, hey, is descent with modification? How modified is our generation going to be from one to the next? Um, and we can calculate that mathematically by doing allele frequency. And what that is, is the proportion of one allele compared with all of the other alleles for that trait in the gene pool. And there's a formula that I'm going to ask you to write down here in just a minute in order for us to calculate allele frequency. And what I'm saying by frequency is how often does this allele appear in the gene pool? Okay, is it 75% of the gene pool? Is it 100% of the gene pool? Is it 52% of the gene pool? It could, be, it could be a variety of percentages or what we call frequencies. Okay, so there's our, that's what allele frequency is, and this is how we're going to calculate it. Allele frequency, simply put, is the, total, the number of, of one type of allele over the total number of alleles. Okay, the number of one allele divided by the total all, of all the alleles in the gene pool. All right, here we go. Let's go through some calculations. So if I want to calculate the frequency of the dominance allele, that means the frequency of, you know, big A over here, I'm going to put uh, the number of the total, or excuse me, the number of big A's in my gene pool on the top 
as the numerator and then the total number of alleles as my denominator here. So I'm just going to divide the number of big A's divided by the total number of A's, okay, the total number of alleles, all right, in the gene pool. So as I said down here, if there are four homozygous dominant individuals and five heterozygotes, then there are 13 dominant alleles in the gene pool, okay? Now, I, uh, I put the genotypes on the population over here um, for, for convenience sake, but if you think about it, do organisms walk around with their genotypes plastered on them? No, they don't. So what we can do in this situation is that we can just we could probably just count the number of big A's and count the number of A's pretty easily, but it's not going to be that easy and there's going to be some extra steps involved. And you got to remember what homozygous dominant and heterozygous and homozygous recessive mean um, in order to make these calculations sometimes because we're not always going to see the genotypes um, listed out here for us. Okay, so... Um, one way to find out what the, the uh, number of big A's are, the number of dominant alleles, is just to look at this picture. But another way that we're going to have to get used to is uh, doing a little calculation behind it, right? So if there are four dominant, uh, excuse me, homozygous dominant individuals here, that means there's eight big A's from them. And then there's five heterozygous individuals. That means there's five more big A's from that group. And if we add eight plus five, we get a total of 13 dominant alleles in our gene pool. All right. So just to double check our calculations here and make sure we're not off, if there's 13, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 um, total dominant alleles in this gene pool. Okay, so we got, if we got 13 big A's, we got 13 dominant alleles, we have 24 total because there's 12 individuals and they each have two alleles. Um, 13 divided by 24 is 54 or 0.54, 54%. That means 54% of the gene pool is dominant in this population of blobs. All right, um, so let's try it for the recessive allele. It's the same thing as before, except we're counting the little A's, right? So it's the number of the recessive alleles divided by the total. Okay. Same thing as before. If there, there's three homozygous recessive individuals, okay, that meet, gives us six recessive alleles, and five heterozygotes, that gives us five more recessive alleles. That means there's a grand total of 11, 11, there we go, little a's, 11, 11 recessive alleles in our gene pool. Okay, so we have 11 little a's, sorry about the typo here. Um, and so let's do some math, right? If we have 11 little a's out of the 24 total, 11 recessive alleles, what do we get? We have 46% of recessive allele frequency, okay? Um, and, or that we can write it as 0.46, or you can write it as 46%. It does not matter to me, okay? So uh, what we got is the frequency of the recessive allele is 4.46, and the frequency of the dominant allele is 0.54. Okay, so, uh, you know, here's these blobs, they're living their lives, and this is one generation, and they're all happy, and uh, they all reproduce with each other, right? And they're going to produce more blobs for the next generation, and the previous generation dies out. Okay, so uh, after one generation of reproduction between these blobs, the population changes. And what are the new frequencies? Okay, so check out our new population over here. It has definitely changed if you see, uh, see the difference between the two. Um, so what I'm going to challenge you to do right now, if you have not tried it yourself yet, um, is to pause the video, try to calculate based on the example that we just went through, what's the frequency of the recessive allele and what's the frequency of the dominant allele. So pause the video and see if you can't uh, get it before I reveal the answers. Okay, ready? Here we go. The frequency of the recessive allele turned out to be 25% or 0.25, and the frequency of the dominance allele ended up being 75% or 0.75. Okay, and here's the key point. Now, we went from 0.46 and 0.54 to 0.25 and 0.75. What does that mean? Well, that means evolution occurred. Descent with modification, right? The descendants of the previous generation are slightly modified, slightly different from the previous generation. That means evolution has occurred. It says right there, if a population's allele frequencies change from one generation to the next, it has evolved. And that's what evolution is. This is more specifically what we call 
microevolution. It's a change in allele frequencies of a gene pool from one generation to the next. And in our next video, we're going to talk about the five different ways that microevolution can occur. All right, uh, so that's it for this video. We're going to be doing part two next week. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you next time.